Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, I want to spend some time talking about the reactivity of benzene. As I mentioned in the introduction, benzene has specific stabilization due to being an aromatic compound that resists the typical reactions of alkenes. So oxidation reactions, bromination reactions, reduction reactions, those don't occur readily on benzene rings. For example, if we take toluene and react it with strong oxidizing agents such as chromic acid or potassium permanganate, what we see is there is no oxidation of the ring double bonds, whereas alkenes would normally be oxidized. However, the benzylic position, the CH3 group here on toluene right next to the benzene ring is referred to the benzylic position. Uh, that gets oxidized by replacing the hydrogen bonds with oxygen bonds. So we can convert toluene into benzoic acid by oxidation. As a matter of fact, any alkyl group that has at least one hydrogen or oxygen bond to it can be oxidized with these oxidants, breaking off the carbons to deliver the carboxylic acid or benzoic acid product. You can see with the oxygens attached, that gets oxidized. Again, the carbons break off. Where that reaction stops working is when we have no hydrogens or oxygens attached, and it's all carbons attached, such as this quaternary carbon with no hydrogens, only carbons. That has no reaction uh, in the oxidation chemistry. But it does demonstrate the stability of the double bonds in the ring being not reactive to those strong oxidation reactions. We see this also in a reaction which you're very familiar with. That is the hydrogenation or addition of hydrogen across a double bond. In this molecule where we have a double bond that's not within an aromatic ring, that gets hydrogenated to the alkane just fine. However, all of the double bonds in the ring remain in the product untouched. They're not reduced by hydrogen. That's not to say that we can't do reactions. If we force it, we can. So if you use special catalysts um, and high pressures and high temperatures, you can get hydrogen to add to those double bonds. But it's extremely difficult, demonstrating again that the aromatic stability is uh, making these very unreactive towards typical alkene reactions. So what do aromatic compounds do in terms of reactions? Well. There is a reaction when we have highly activated electrophiles, which we refer to as the electrophilic aromatic substitution. Now, we've seen substitution reactions before. For example, if we take an uh, alkyl halide and react it with a nucleophile such as something like methoxide, sodium methoxide, that will do an SN2 substitution reaction where the nucleophile will add to the carbon and break off the bromine. So what's happening in this, of course, is a nucleophilic substitution. That's not happening in the case of benzene rings. Um, we do a substitution reaction, but we're not doing the typical chemistry of alkenes. So if you were to take an alkene compound and react it with Br2, what happens is that the electrons of the double bond react with the bromine to generate an intermediate bromonium ion. This is chemistry that you're well familiar with. And then the bromine will add a second time to put two bromines where the double bond used to be. So I want you to notice what this is. This is basically an addition reaction, addition of a Br plus, and then an addition of a Br minus. So it's two addition reactions, addition and addition. That's not happening in this case. What we're doing is an addition followed by an elimination. We've added a Br plus and we've lost an H plus, which ends up as HBr in the end. This only happens when you have a catalyst to activate bromine to become very, very reactive. So this, this Lewis acid catalyst is very important to be able to break apart the bromine to generate something which can react with the benzene ring. So the iron tribromide Lewis acid takes a bromide with its lone pair to generate Br plus and Fe Br4 minus. Okay, and it is this very reactive electrophile that is doing the chemistry with the benzene. So let's take a look at what can happen here. Um, only when we have very reactive electrophiles do we get these double bonds to react. So the electrons in the double bond can react with the bromine and that generates an intermediate carbocation, 
and I'll draw the two double bonds remaining. There's bromine, there's another hydrogen on that atom, and then there's a carbocation on the adjacent carbon. That carbocation is in conjugation with the other double bonds, so that you can actually delocalize that carbocation from that position uh, to that position to that position. So the plus charge is actually spread out among three carbons of that benzene ring. And if you don't remember how to draw resonance forms, you might want to take a look at brushing up on reviewing that material. Now, instead of adding Br- as a second step, what happens next is reforming the very stable aromatic ring because we've lost that in this process and we want to regain that stabilization. So what happens is the Br- from FeBr4 will take the proton, will lose an H+, the electrons from that bond reform the double bond, and that generates the product, bromobenzene. So overall, it's an addition of Br+, plus, addition reaction, followed by an elimination of H+. Plus. And here's some more details about this mechanism. The double bond electrons in the benzene ring will react only when we have a very reactive electrophile form. So you have to react Br2 with a Lewis acid first to break it apart and make free Br+, plus that's very reactive. You get an intermediate carbocation, uh, which is delocalized. You can draw three different resonance forms, and then after the addition reaction, we eliminate the H plus to form HBr as a byproduct and generate the bromobenzene product or the electrophilic substitution product. And you can see that in the reaction energy diagram why that occurs because we have uh, very stable aromatic compounds. And in order to get to the carbocation intermediate, we have to lose all of that aromatic stabilization. We have to overcome that. So the activation energy is actually quite high. We get to a high energy intermediate, and then we regain that aromatic stabilization by eliminating the H plus and reforming the double bond. However, if we were to add Br minus as a second step, we would get to a product which is much higher in energy. Thus, the pathway to there is higher in energy, and it is not the pathway the reaction follows. So the reaction pathway will follow electrophilic aromatic substitution, giving the most stable substituted product. Well, halogenation can be done with many different halogens. So here's an example of chlorine. Uh, we can do the same with bromine or iodine. Uh, the point is that these all have to react with some Lewis acid, and you notice we match these just to avoid any cross-contamination. So iron trichloride is good to generate Cl plus from chlorine. Iron tribromide can generate Br plus from bromine. It, iron triiodide is a little bit more difficult to deal with practically just because of the reactive nature of it, but other Lewis acids, and there are many of them, can be used. So copper iodide can generate I plus. Any way you can generate I plus to do the reaction, it is those reactive species which is reacting first, followed by loss of the hydrogen. So in all these cases, HCl, HBr, HI is the byproduct. Well, we can substitute other groups as well. So for example, uh, if we want to take benzene and make nitrobenzene, what is it that we have to add to benzene to create nitrobenzene? Well, we need the plus species to add. So what we need is NO2 plus. The Lewis structure for NO2 plus looks like this. Um, and you can't just get a bottle of NO2 plus, so we have to generate it within the reaction. And the way to do that is to react nitric acid with concentrated sulfuric acid. The structure of nitric acid looks like this, and that is protonated by the sulfuric acid. So uh, the, what we need to do is lose the OH group. So that gets protonated. We generate an intermediate compound, which looks like this. Water will break off from this, and then we'll generate the NO2 plus molecule that is the active electrophile which reacts with benzene. Then the reaction takes place just the same as adding our Br+. A double bond of the benzene ring reacts with NO2. You generate a carbocation intermediate, which you can draw three different resonance forms for. And then the hydrogen is lost to regenerate the aromatic ring and provide us with the product. Well, we can do sulfonation with fuming sulfuric acid. Fuming sulfuric acid is basically sulfuric acid that contains SO3. And if we want to make a sulfonic acid, what we need is an SO3H plus molecule to be the reactive species. And that's generated by reacting SO3 with sulfuric acid. So the O minus of this SO3 molecule 
gets protonated to form SO3H+. Then that's the reactive electrophile which reacts with the benzene ring through this exact same mechanism. Addition of the group plus followed by elimination of the proton from the carbocation intermediate. We can add carbon groups as well, and I've been generic here, such as an R group. Uh, R stands for any alkyl group. So we can add an alkyl group, and what we need then is a carbocation to react that with. We've seen ways to generate carbocations. For example, if you take uh, 2-methylpropene and you react that with something like H2SO4, you'll generate an intermediate carbocation, which would look in this case like this. That will react with benzene to generate carbocation intermediate. That carbocation intermediate then would undergo loss of hydrogen to regenerate now the product that's been alkylated. So the product in this case is alkylated. We have put on a tertiary butyl group. Keep in mind in this Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction that all of the details that we've talked about previously with how to generate carbocations and their stability uh, comes into play. For example, we can generate carbocations in other ways. Friedel and Crafts discovered the reaction of a Lewis acid using something like aluminum trichloride can actually take a chlorine off of an alkyl group to generate carbocations freely from the carbon groups. These often require heat because generating carbocations is a little bit high energy. However, in the presence of a Lewis acid, halogens can be removed to leave behind the carbon with a plus charge. That then reacts with the benzene ring to do our substitution reaction under electrophilic conditions. So the exact same uh, example we did before, we could use tertiary butyl chloride plus aluminum trichloride that will generate the tertiary carbocation and then that will react with benzene to generate the intermediate carbocation that will eliminate H plus to generate the product. Since it's a carbocation other things can happen as well so if we take for example this primary chloride and react that with aluminum trichloride we would generate this carbocation, but that carbocation will immediately undergo rearrangement to generate the tertiary carbocation, primary carbocation to tertiary carbocation. So what we'll end up with is the exact same product starting from t-butyl chloride or 1-chloro-2-methylpropane. That'll give the same product because carbocations undergo rearrangement when they be can, can become more stable. There are some limitations to Friedel Crafts alkylation. Only alkyl halides will work. Those halides that are on uh, benzene rings or on double bonds do not work. So chloroethene cannot form a carbocation on the sp2 carbon. So that was not a good reaction to do Friedel Crafts alkylation. Benzene rings that have electron withdrawing groups on them, such as NO2, nitriles, carbon. Uh, carboxylic acids, etc., are very, very slow to react, and so it's very difficult to do this kind of chemistry when you have electron withdrawing groups on it. Um, and other groups on there could react directly with alkyl halides, so it's a, also a limitation that one needs to think about is other reactions. So if, if you have something like a nitrogen on there, the nitrogen will react in an SN2 substitution with nitrogen as a nucleophile rather than generating the carbocation and adding to the ring. A similar reaction is what we refer to as a Friedel Crafts acylation. A carbon with a double bond that's attached to a larger substituent is referred to as an acyl group. An acyl group. So this is an acyl substituent. And we can do an acylation of benzene, put an acyl group on benzene. And to think about how we do that, what we need is an acyl cation. We need to generate that. And we can do it exactly the same way as we generated alkyl cations. Under Friedel Crafts conditions, uh, Lewis acid such as aluminum trichloride can take the chlorine off of the acyl chloride, generate the carbocation, and then that will react with the benzene ring under the exact same reaction mechanism that we talked about for all of the alkylation reactions and, and bromination reactions and nitration reactions, etc. So here is a summary of all of the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions we've talked about so far. We can add halogens to a benzene ring by using the diatomic halogen with an appropriate Lewis acid to put on either a bromine, a chlorine, or an iodine. 
Uh, and notice that combination generates these reactive electrophiles, Br+, plus, Cl+, plus, or I+. Plus. We can do nitration by adding an NO2+, plus generated from nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Sulfonic acids can be synthesized using fuming sulfuric acid to generate an SO3H+, plus electrophile. Uh, we can do Friedel-Crafts alkylation by generating carbocations using Lewis acids to remove a chlorine from a carbon atom. Uh, as well as we can generate acyl benzenes by making an acyl cation, oops, that chlorine doesn't belong there, making an acyl cation reactive species by using a Lewis acid with an acyl chloride. All of these reactions occur by the exact same mechanism, addition of the electrophilic species followed by elimination of H plus in the end.